Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jonathan Nichols, and I am the principal here at UTC Reading. And a very warm welcome to our first live virtual open event hosted on YouTube. For those of you that are engaging with us at UTC Reading for the first time this evening, we are a university technical college with specialisms in engineering and computer science for 14 to 18 year olds. Our vision is to transform lives through learning, and this applies to everyone that engages with us at the UTC. During this packed one hour session, we're going to share with you some of the ways in which we deliver this vision and what you can experience by joining us as a student in either year 10 or 12 in the future. You will hear from some of my colleagues in the leadership group at the UTC. Industry partners that engage with us throughout the academic year, along with alumni now working for one of our industry partners. You'll also hear from students from the current year 11 and 13 cohort. And on top of all of that, we will be showing you some of our specialist areas within the UTC building. This is an incredibly proud moment for the UTC, not just because it's our first event of this type, but the entire event has been planned and all of the technical support this evening is being delivered by our students from the UTC. At the end of the features, we will host a 10 minute Q&A session where my team and I will answer as many questions as possible. In order for you to send us those questions, do please type them in the comments section on the YouTube feed and our production team will pass these to us at the end of this session. If we don't answer them all, we will follow this up with a printed document sent to all of our viewers this evening where we'll be able to answer those questions that have been sent through to us. To start with this afternoon, we are going to go straight over to our workshops where David is waiting for us. David? Thanks very much, John, and uh, welcome to the Department of Engineering here at the College. Uh, my name is David Court, I'm Director of Engineering. Uh, and uh, I'd like to welcome you to one of our two specialisms. Uh, engineering uh, we is, uh, that we provide here covers both uh, Key Stage 4 and Key Stage 5, uh, and we aim to give you a general background that will enable you to go into future careers uh, making an informed choice. Um, <coughs> at Key Stage 4, we run a qualification called EAL. It's a GCSE equivalent um, and it's comprised of four units. So come to us in year 10 and this is the sort of thing we'll do. So the four units, um, one of which is in the workshop and we make, it's a very practical unit, we make things we, or you will make things. So here's an example of student work from last year. Okay, um, you will also have a unit that's uh, associated with health and safety because obviously engineering workshops are dangerous places so health and safety is a key element. Um, also about materials, uh, engineers need to know about materials uh, but another key element is drawing and uh, engineers communicate through drawing. So uh, basic skills, workshop skills uh, and essential skills for engineers. Alongside that we run some enrichment and so for instance here is an example of a drone that a student has made. It's a mechatronics experiment so we introduce electronics into our general engineering. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, moving on then. Um, <clears throat> at Key Stage 5, so for Year 12 students, um, we run two BTECs. Uh, the first one is a certificate. This is uh, a BTEC comprising four units and it runs alongside two A-levels. So those students can take two A-levels, normally maths and physics, and then four BTEC units. Alternatively, uh, you can take a full BTEC extended diploma qualification, which is comprised of 15 units. Now, <coughs> we'll move into an area where we've set up a lot of key stage five equipment. Uh, we are continually working at the college and we have a great team of staff uh, and support staff that have enabled us to build up our facilities. And let me just show you some of those as we walk into another room. This room's been set up to demonstrate some of the things that students will undertake at Key Stage 5. So over here I mentioned about drawing. Um, the first stage would be, and all, this is something all uh, our Year 12s do, is they undertake computer aid design. Okay, so you're, you're looking there at uh, examples of student work, student projects. Um, 
<coughs> for computer aid design. Um, this is backed up by Autodesk qualifications that we also run. So these are professional qualifications to enhance a, a student's uh, opportunities when he leaves. Um, alongside that, uh, many of our projects require students to produce prototypes. And here are some 3D printers that we use with examples of student work uh, that they produced uh, from the CAD drawings that I showed you just a few minutes ago. So uh, we've got a range of 3D printers. Um, some are old, some are new ones. Uh, we've had a lot of support from industry. We work a lot with industry. And you can see the type of things that students will involve themselves in. We also work with the Army um, and the uh, Navy. And many of these projects will relate to things that students get involved with during the two years on Peak Stage 5. In the corner, we've got uh, a new project that we're working on with industry, and that's virtual reality. This is something that is uh, very pioneering, and my colleague is working on this. We're working with uh, uh, universities as well to try and develop the use of virtual reality uh, for uh, design purposes. Okay. At the back here, uh, we just walked past uh, there's, a, there's uh, a year 10 project here actually in the corner that's called a, a green power car, it's an electric car that the year 10 students have built. Uh, that's another example of an enrichment project. And then moving back into here, we have robotics. Uh, we, we do a lot of electronics work in Key Stage 5, and colleagues are developing this. So whether it's a, a fixed axis uh, robot or uh, a more conventional one on wheels, uh, students again get to use that. Over here, um, the machinery that we passed in the workshop, the lathes and milling machines, conventional machines, um, students will get to use, but they'll also get to use uh, CNC machines here, computer numerical control machines uh, that uh, are uh, not state of the art, but they are uh, very good facilities. Okay, and then finally up in this end, there's some examples of material testing equipment that we use, um, uh, which is again key to a key stage five student. So we, we work uh, with some of the better manufacturers around here, looking at various materials and doing things like tensile testing and hardness testing and so on. So uh, hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea and. Uh, I'm hoping that you will choose engineering technology uh, as a future career. Look forward to seeing you then. Otherwise, it's over to you, Neil. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Neil Powney, and I'm the Vice Principal here. I'm going to give you a quick overview of the curriculum offer here at the UTC. First up, Key Stage 4. English, Maths and Sciences are all core subjects where all students start on all three separate sciences. Students then choose whether they want to specialise in engineering or computing and will then do a level two technical subject in one or other over the two years. Alongside this, they will choose two option subjects from either business, history, geography, 3D art and design or computer science. To complete the offer, we'll then also include sport, enrichment, personal and professional development sessions. At Key Stage 5, there are three routes of study. Route one is the academic route, where the students choose three A-levels from maths, further maths, biology, chemistry, physics, English, business or computer science. There's also two half A-level subjects of core level three maths and extended project qualification. Route two is the technical route, where students choose either a triple B-tech in computer science or engineering. Both courses are equivalent to three A-levels. Route three is the hybrid route, where students choose an extended certificate in either computing or engineering, both of which are equivalent to a single A-level, and two academic subjects alongside those. All three routes can lead to an apprenticeship, employment, or university. To give you an idea of where our students progress onto, the final slide shows you some of the universities where our students are now studying typically for degrees in engineering, computer science, or other STEM subjects. The companies you see are where some of our students progressed to last year onto level three, level four, and degree apprenticeship programs. 
Your destination is really important to us and our aim is to support you in making sure it's as high a quality destination as possible. Now, to show you the impact of some of the skills developed within the curriculum, the next showcase will show you how a group of our students, together with our technicians, were able to support local NHS providers and key community sectors during lockdown to help solve the PPE shortages. Well, two thirds of doctors have said they do not feel safely protected at work. The government insists millions of units of protective equipment have been delivered to the front line. But according to a survey by the British Medical Association, many medics are caring for patients with little or no PPE. Well, now schools, colleges and businesses have responded to their cry for help, as Charlotte Wilkins will explain. Every day, our NHS staff are putting the lives of the people they care for before their own. Yet many are simply not being given the proper protective equipment they need to do their jobs safely. But now many of our region's schools and businesses are stepping in to help. Brighton unions say nurses are being forced to make their own PPE from plastic laminate sheets and elastic bands due to the lack of protective equipment while other staff say they simply have no choice but to reuse single-use equipment for some of the most dangerous procedures. And it's stories like this one which inspired 15-year-old engineering and product design student Oliver Hitchings from Reading to make 100 protective visors for his local hospitals and GP surgery. So I have 3D printer and 3D printing years. It takes about one and a half hours to mask, including about another 20 minutes to make up the face shields. These people that we're sending them to don't have any PPE, or the PPE hat isn't fit for purpose, so it doesn't fit over their glasses or masks or anything else. We are privileged to be able to work closely with many industry partners from the engineering and computer science sectors. Our partners engage with our students regularly to give them insights, to help them develop skills ready for the workplace, and ultimately they work with us to help create a clear pipeline of talent from the UTC into their companies. To give you an idea how UTC Reading and our industry relationships impact our students, you will now hear from Sam and Simon, two of our UTC Reading alumni, from Cisco. Hi, I'm Simon Light. I'm a systems engineer at Cisco. Um, I left UTC Reading in 2017, where I joined the apprenticeship programme, where we do our degree and we rotate around the business at the same time. I felt that the UTC Reading gave me some good skills and um, the project days that we did there really gave me insight into what the world of working would be like. Hi, I'm Sam Hastings. I was in the same classes as Simon at UTC Reading. We both left at the same time and both joined Cisco straight after college. I completely agree with what Simon said and back at UTC Reading, being able to do classes that were not only part of the curriculum, but also expand into businesses and see companies like Cisco coming and visiting really helped me understand the world of work and put me in a position where I think I was best to move on to an apprenticeship straight after school. Sam and I this year ran a collaboration day at UTC Reading, which was a project day where we brought some of the collaboration gear we work with on a day-to-day -day basis in. Um, so they, these were things such as WebEx, um, and we got the kids hands on and got them experienced using the products. Um, and we use this as an, a driver for some innovation in the school. So we set out a project where the kids um, set out what they thought a school of the future would look like using things such as WebEx. Um, but we kind of let their uh, imagination run free and let them explore what they thought uh, technology could really achieve. When Simon and I were at the college, we also had Cisco visiting then and we did a day focused on the Internet of Things and how that's going to really revolutionise the market. And even since those days, Cisco has started releasing really interesting and innovative new products in that space. So it's really interesting to see the early part of that before it became something that Cisco really monetized. And likewise, Cisco aren't the only organisations that will be running days while you're still at the college. We've had various other companies such as Peterborough Associates who ran different days with us as well. And being able to see different parts of different industries really helped me understand that Cisco and IT is the area of business that I really wanted to focus on. Sam and I have also been given great opportunities to travel while our three years at Cisco. Um, in our first year, we travelled up to a hospital in Scotland where we helped the hospital deploy some handsets that they had 
as well as help troubleshoot some of the issues they were going through. We also both travelled out to Barcelona last year um, with Cisco Live, which is the largest networking event RAN. Um, we ran it four times a year across the globe. So we got the opportunity to go to Barcelona to help view and set up that. Being able to go to the colleges like Simon and I did whilst we worked at Cisco and able to volunteer our time and provide education for you guys is something that we could do thanks to our Time to Give initiative. That's whereby Cisco pays us not only on all wage, but also the places that we go to, be they a charity or school, the cost of us being working at Cisco as well. So we're able to fund that charity by dedicating our time, but also money from the organisation. And that's what enabled Simon and us to be able to do those core projects with you. So we're really grateful for that initiative. And that's why I think that Cisco is one of the best places to work in the world. We've even been voted it as such by the Great Places to Work survey. Simon and I have had the opportunity to really understand what we wanted out of industry, not only from Cisco, but also from the foundations we got at UTC Reading. Thank you for coming to the Open Evening today. I think this is a great college to go to. It's a shame that Simon and I can't be there in person, but we hope to see you in the future when you're students and we come along again to help you run some of the days that you might see with other members of industry. We believe we are a centre of excellence when it comes to computer science and our students progress onto incredible careers within the industry thanks to our links with the industry partners. To give you an idea of how we deliver our computer science curriculum, we are now going to go head up to Robert, who is in our computing department. Hello and welcome to computing department, the high point of UTC Reading at the top of the computing tower. My name is Robert Bradley, I'm the director of computing. Um, and I also have a role in promoting professional qualifications across the UTC, and I'll tell you more about that towards the end of my little talk. Now, as you've heard already, UTC Reading is one of the leading establishments uh, for computing in the area. And we talk to a lot of business partners about the future careers that our students may wish to go into. Five key features come out, five key fields, come out of all of those discussions. Cloud computing, science, internet of things and robotics, and cyber security. And the qualifications you can gain here give you that broad range of skills, which will allow you to go into any of those fields. So at Key Stage 5, you, can have, you get two options. So if you pick the computing option, you will do a Cambridge National Information Technologies course. This gives you skills in project management, data collection and analysis and pre presentation, and cyber security. We also have the option of taking GCSE Computer Science, and this is the more traditional route, which will tell you about the computer architecture, hardware, software, um, and you will learn your programming skills here. Moving on to Key Stage 5, if you continue with an A-level, you will continue to do programming skills and you will take your GCSE knowledge a lot deeper in the ter terms of data representation, architecture and so on. You may choose to do either the BTEC Extended Certificate or the Extended Diploma. Here you get a broad range of topics ranging from project management again to mobile app design, website development, game development and everything else. And throughout all of those courses, there is this ethos of practical, hands-on, project-based learning. And through that, we hope you will get a proficiency at computing skills. Now, that proficiency at computing skills can allow you to go on to get additional qualifications, what we term professional qualifications. And these are qualifications that are industry standard. The difference to come into UTC Reading is that not only will you get the standard academic qualifications, but you will get industry qualifications as well, which will really help you stand out from the crowd when it comes to getting your apprenticeship or your degree or going into employment. So for computing students, that's likely to be the Microsoft Technology Associate qualifications. And you can do this in server administration, networking, uh, software development, HTML and CSS, and so on. However, our engineering students, as David has already mentioned, can go on and get your Autodesk qualifications in things like AutoCAD and Fusion 360. But all students at UTC Reading are encouraged to get professional qualifications. 
whatever job you are going to go into, you are going to be using some sort of Office software. And we here push the Microsoft Office Specialist qualification, hoping all of our students will take advantage of it. Many of the staff are qualified in both Word, PowerPoint and Excel already. And we've had success in recent weeks with the Microsoft Office Specialist UK and Ireland Championship, where we got one and two in the PowerPoint category, uh, with just three marks out of a thousand splitting the two. But the winner will get an all expenses paid trip to Florida to take part in the World Championships next year. We also have the Adobe Creative Associate qualifications for those people who are more creative and want to do Dreamweaver and so on. Thank you. I hope you enjoy the rest of the tour and I'll pass you back now. Hi everyone. My name's Jenny Thompson and I'm one of the assistant principals and I lead on teaching, learning and the curriculum. The curriculum at UTC is focused and responsive to the needs of the industry. We deliver the curriculum through a blend of approaches that includes traditional classroom delivery, project-based learning and experiential learning. Our Key Stage 4 Experience Days and Key Stage 5 Pipeline Days immerse our students in industry-focused work, real-life projects and enable our students to build positive relationships with employers during their education. This helps to support their aspirations for the future. To give you an idea of how we deliver some of our core curriculum, you're now going to hear from our Director of English and Humanities and the Key Stage 5 Maths Coordinator. Hello there, I'm Lewis Hart, I'm one of the Maths teachers here at UTC Reading and also the Key Stage 5 Maths Coordinator. So Maths is one of the most popular subjects at UTC Reading, um, which is hardly surprising given that it's a really key subject for and it really supports our specialisms of engineering and computer science. So all students at Key Stage 4 will study GCSE Maths. Um, most will do the high level, higher tier paper, um, but where necessary we also offer the foundation tier, tier paper. Um, and then at Key Stage 5, um, A-Level Maths is the most popular A-Level um, at UTC Reading. We have I think, 72 students studying in Year 12 going into Year 13. Um, we also offer A-Level Further Maths. Um, cohort's a bit smaller for A-Level Further Maths, but still quite a popular choice. Um, particularly with those who have a real enthusiasm for the subject or want to study it further on at university. Um, also, we deliver Core Level 3 Maths is the other, other course we offer at A-Level. Um, this is students that want to study Maths beyond GCSE um, but might not feel confident doing a full A-Level. Um, we've been able to show our strength in Maths. Um, it's one of, our, one of the things that we pride ourselves on at UGC Reading. Uh, we had a large group of students doing the Senior Maths Challenge recently, and one of them even qualified for the British Maths Olympiad. So, Maths, just to summarise, it really is a sort of key thing, it's a bedrock that underlies um, our specialism as a computer science and engineering at UTC, and we look forward to developing your skills as students in this key subject. Thank you. Hello, and welcome to the English department. My name is Nicola Gibson and I'm the Director of English and Humanities at UTC Reading. We deliver both English language and literature at GCSE, and we also deliver English language and literature at A-Level. In addition to that, our department also delivers History and Geography at GCSE, and the EPQ at Level 3, which is the Extended Project Qualification. We deliver the core curriculum just like any other school, but there is so much more than that. At GCSE, you might, when studying poetry, be required to be a Russian Cossack at the Battle of Balaclava and defeat the charge of the Light Brigade. In geography, you might need to build a shelter in the woods in Snowdonia and develop those bushcraft skills. In literature, you might be a high court judge deciding if there is a moral side to murder. In history, you'll walk the same streets as Jack did in 1888. If you're fond of music, then you'll love the opportunity to analyse some of those favourite lyrics. At A-level, we're off to Paris to explore the city in non-fiction literature and plumb the depths of Victorian Gothic in Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. 
The EPQ allows you to explore anything your heart desires, to push yourself towards your future career goals, or to learn the piano to widen your own self goals. We debate, we argue, we philosophize, but most of all, we learn and we have fun doing it. Thank you very much. One of the ways that our industry partners engage with us is to support our Key Stage 5 pipeline programme and our Key Stage 4 experience days. All of these provide our students with the opportunity to become fully immersed in the world of work and deliver solutions to problems that industry are facing right now. None of this happens without positive engagement with our employers and Fujitsu is one of our long-term partners who have been supporting the UTC in a number of different ways. You are now going to hear from some of the team from Fujitsu about what their experience is like with working at, with our students at the UTC. Hi, my name is Emily and I work at Fujitsu. For those of you who haven't heard of Fujitsu before, we're a global IT company that offer technological products, services and solutions to customers all over the world. Throughout the year, we support UTC students in preparing for their future and giving them an insight into what it's like working within the IT industry. Throughout the year, Fujitsu support as many UTC Reading events as possible. This includes open evenings, workshops and virtual assessment centres. This gives students the perfect opportunity to come and ask us any questions they might have about finding the right career path for them, as well as finding out how to properly prepare for future job applications and interviews. We also sponsored the Fujitsu Hub Room at UTC Reading, which is now used for industry partner events and business study lessons. Fujitsu also took part in UTC Reading's Pipeline programme by offering quarterly workshops for the students. This year, our workshops have revolved around project management, cybersecurity, computer networking and software development to allow students to be able to explore different business areas within the IT industry. The workshops are designed to be as interactive as possible to enable a greater understanding of what a job in each of these areas entails. This means students can make informed decisions about their future academic and career choices. Hi, my name is Keemna Hanrahan. Last year, Fujitsu hired 45 degree apprentices nationwide, seven being in Bracknell and seven being in Basingstoke. This gives UTC range students a big opportunity to come to Fujitsu. We offer many roles going from business consultant, project management, cyber security and software development. UTC Reading alumni have a very strong relationship with UTC Reading. They come back for open evenings, career fairs and pipeline days to show their experience of Fujitsu thus far. They talk about their role, the things that they've experienced, the activities that they get involved with outside of work, being UTC Reading. And this gives them the opportunity to give back to the college, to have, better, have a better relationship with the staff and show what Fujitsu has offered them. We are looking forward to continue our relationship with UTC Reading and continue our engagement in the next academic year. Stephanie Mitchell, Executive Director of Careers and Destinations at UTC Reading and welcome to our Fujitsu Hub. This is used for the Business Key Stage 4 and Key Stage 5 curriculum and as you can see it is a great space to learn and to teach. UTC Reading was the first Fujitsu ambassador in which they helped us to create and design this room not only as a classroom but also for our students to engage with industry partners. I will now take you through to one of our four science labs. Um, this is one of our four incredible science labs at UTC's Reading. As you've heard earlier, we run all three sciences at Key Stage 4, um, and what we aim to do is ensure students carry them on into Year 11. We also run um, all three sciences at Key Stage 5, so that's Biology, Chemistry and Physics, but also we run BTEC Applied Science. We closely work with University of Reading and things that include what we do with University of Reading is we have volunteers in schools which have students coming into classrooms to support students. They are part of our pipeline programme and they've done fantastic stuff with this year. We're looking at health science, we've looked at diabetes, heart disease and also obesity. But also we work with them at, at offering teacher training placement at UT Reading. What we, you're going to look at next is some of the exp fantastic experiments we've done earlier today.
again and welcome to the product design and architecture department. We deliver AQA art and design at both GCSE and A level. GCSE has a product design focus and at A level we have an architecture focus. So over the course of the two years at GCSE, um, it is made up of a series of projects across the years, uh, culminating in two portfolios, one which is worth 60% and one which is worth 40%. As you can see, the students work through a series of projects uh, such as making lamps as well as architectural models and they work in sketchbooks to develop their research, their drawing, their CAD designs as well as lots and lots of modelling. At A-level, it is a really, really popular subject that particularly complements subjects such as physics, maths and engineering. We uh, have also portfolios in architecture as well, uh, in which the students can get really, really creative, developing more in-depth uh, architecture skills, such as researching architecture practitioners, gaining inspiration, and then turning those inspirations into real-life models that you can see here. So that's a little bit of an overview of the product design and architecture departments. We hope that you will join us in September. Uh, and thank you. Back to you. Hello again. In addition to the exciting and focused and responsive curriculum, we also offer a range of enrichment activities to add further value to your experience here at UTC. Students can engage in activities such as engineering and computer science challenges, green power cars, coding and robotics. We also run a combined cadet force contingent which has provided students with a wealth of opportunities since its launch. You'll hear shortly from a year 11 Flight Sergeant Elise Hammond who's just been selected to be Lord Lieutenant Cadet for Berkshire for next year. You'll then hear from two of our current students in year 11 and 13 about their experience. Hi I'm Elise, I'm currently a UTC Reading student in year 11 studying engineering I'm also part of the Combined Cadet Force, so that runs in our enrichment time. That's one hour twice a week. Um, as part of our enrichment programme, you can do anything from an engineering-sided uh, uh, course to a uh, science, computer science uh, and loads of other things in between. Within the CCF enrichment, we get lots of opportunities. So this could be flying, so going for a day to RAF Benson and getting an air experience flight in a Grob Tutor. Um, which we have lots of opportunities to do. Uh, it could be going on camps, so uh, in the holidays or over the weekends, sometimes even during school time. Uh, we get the opportunity to go off to an RAF station or a training camp, do adventurous training activities there. Um, within the CCF time that we have during enrichment, we can do anything from leadership to first aid to drill and ceremonial or uh, just basic principles of airmanship and things like that, so it covers quite a range of activities. Um, as part of the CCF, I've recently been awarded the uh, CCF Lord Lieutenant's Cadet for 2020-2021 Berkshire, so really looking forward to that opportunity. Hello everyone, my name is Tom Canning, I'm the Student President here at UTC Reading. Uh, I joined the college in Year 12 uh, and I did this not not only because of the standard of teaching, but because the school has a really good business outlook, it has industry links, and it has a really good ethos around apprenticeships. So with our business outlook, we all wear blazers when we come into school and wear lanyards, but also call teachers by their first name to give it a bit more of an industry outlook. We also have links with industry. So I've had um, links with people like the Remi and Network Rail, but I know people that have had links with things like um, Cisco and other big companies around the area. The other good thing about UTC Reading is unlike some other colleges that I've seen, uh, we have a good uh, ethos about apprenticeships. So whereas other schools might encourage you to go to university, even if it's not best for you, because it looks good for them to say 96% of our students or so forth have gone to university, UTC Reading will encourage you to do whatever's best for you. So if you want to go into a degree apprenticeship or go to uni, you'll get the necessary support. I'm going to hand over to Nicola, who's going to talk a little bit about what she's doing as a Key Stage 4 student at UTC Reading. Hello everyone. So I'm just going to talk to you about my experience of joining in Year 10. Um, it was quite a big move uh, to leave 
um, you know, in year nine, I was just starting my GCSEs, but UTC really opened up quite a few doors. So as Tom mentioned before, we have quite a few industry partners and they regularly come in to give us talks on what it's like to be in the workplace. And we have hands-on workshops where they work with us to create a final goal and we present in front of our entire year. Another thing I really liked about UTC was the enrichment. So twice a week, we have a session, always about an hour long, where we have basically a compulsory club, but it's not like a usual club. We have clubs like cybersecurity, green power cars, languages, and many more. I was also inclined to come to UTC because in my old school, computing was sort of neglected. It was kind of a side subject. The school wasn't really focused into it. Coming into UTC, I noticed that they were very inclined of pushing us to do our best in engineering and computer science. So when I came here, my spark was relighted for computer science. And that concludes all of our big features for this evening's event. event. And at this point, we were going to move over to a Q&A session. But at this stage, it doesn't appear that within the comments there have been too many questions. So I'm just going to take a moment to give you a bit more information about how we operate as a school, and then we'll conclude the event after that. So one of the big questions that I often get asked is what are the class sizes at the UTC? And this is something that we always try and maintain at a slightly lower level than perhaps a typical secondary school. So around uh, 20 to 25 students at the very maximum in key stage four, and up to around 20 in key stage five for our A-level and our BTEC courses. And the aim is to try and keep slightly smaller groups, uh, particularly where we're doing practical work so that the students are able to integrate with the uh, equipment that we've got around the UTC for the different subject areas. In terms of what the students are expected to wear, uh, we have a very smart business dress code. If you think about what the boardroom looks like on The Apprentice, it's very similar to that. So a very smart, formal business dress and all students and all staff are expected to adhere to that at all times. Um, given that we're a school that specialises in engineering and computer science, you can assume that we will always be using technology to enhance the learning experience for our students. Uh, one of the ways in which we do that is to request that all of our students have access to a laptop device and they can do that either by bringing their own device or buying into our e-learning scheme. Now, during the lockdown period that we've all experienced over the last few weeks and months, our students have been able to use their skills in technology that they developed within the UTC in order to access live lessons throughout the lockdown period, which I'm incredibly proud that we've been able to deliver. Um, one of the other big questions that we often get asked as well, particularly around technology, is what's our rule on mobile phones? Mobile phones can be hugely advantageous to everyone. It's, it's one of the ways in which we keep connected and has been hugely beneficial for us throughout this period of lockdown, uh, but they can sometimes be a distraction too. So we do allow our students to bring their mobile phones into school, but there are some restrictions on where they're allowed to be used and how they're used within their learning environments. So this brings us to the end of our event this evening. If you are joining us in September this year, we are very excited to see you in the not too distant future. And as you would have seen in the guidance that's come out from the government, we will be opening the school in September for all of our students. And for anybody that's joined us this evening that's thinking about joining us in the future, we are planning on new open events in the new academic year, so do look out for those. In the very short term, I will be hosting two more Meet the Principal sessions that are held on a Friday between 9 and 10 a.m. and they are uh, available on our Eventbrite website where you can book in on one of those and we have around 10 families that join me on Zoom and I will take you on a live tour around the building. Whilst we don't have so much on display as we have done this evening, it's still a good way to have a conversation with a slightly smaller group of parents uh, and also ask me many more questions so that hopefully I can answer those for you. So thank you very much for joining us this evening. If you are interested in, uh, interested in applying to the UTC, by all means visit our website or drop us an email on inquiries at utcreading.org.uk or give us a call on 0118 938 1020 and we will do our very best to help with your inquiries. Thank you for joining us today. I really do appreciate it. Stay safe, keep well, and have a wonderful summer. Good night. Mm -hmm.